the initially formed beta hydroxy aldehyde in this case can undergo further reactivity and in fact the same is true of beta hydroxy ketones formed through aldol reactions. The use of heat, long reaction times, or a weak base that generates the enolate reversibly, something like sodium hydroxide, converts the initially formed beta hydroxy ketone or aldehyde into an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound. The product is alpha beta unsaturated because we find a new carbon carbon double bond between the alpha and beta carbons with respect to the carbonyl group. And notice that essentially what has happened here is the elimination of water from the initially formed beta hydroxy ketone or aldehyde. Mechanistically, we first form the enolate of the product reversibly. Notice that because sodium hydroxide is not strong enough to deprotonate alpha to a carbonyl completely, there's going to be a good bit of it left around even after we've formed a substantial amount of product. This is part of the reason why use of weak base tends to lead to aldol condensation reactions, the spontaneous elimination of water. This leaves us with an enolate intermediate in which we have a negative charge, a carbanion adjacent to a hydroxyl group. Beta elimination of hydroxide from this intermediate produces the alpha-beta unsaturated carbonyl compound product. And this is actually the first step that is not reversible in this process. And the reason this step is irreversible is that it establishes a conjugated system in the product, a four-atom pi system consisting of the beta carbon, the alpha carbon, the carbonyl carbon, and the carbonyl oxygen. That delocalized pi system is quite stable, and so this beta elimination tends to be irreversible. Now, you may have raised an eyebrow since we used hydroxide as a leaving group here, and we've previously talked about the fact that hydroxide is a very poor leaving group. And so I do feel compelled to justify this elementary step on thermodynamic grounds. Why does it work, given how much we've ranted and raved about the fact that hydroxide is a poor nucleophage in the past? Well, let's compare the base we start with, the enolate base, to the base we end up with after the elimination, hydroxide. Which of these two is more stable? Well, if we look at it from a pKa perspective and consider the pKa of the conjugate acid, the pKa of an aldehyde or ketone tends to be about 20. This is a typical benchmark for the pKa of a ketone or aldehyde. The pKa of water, the conjugate acid of hydroxide, is a little bit lower. It's down at about 14. So based on pKa considerations, which anion is more stable? The one associated with the stronger conjugate acid, hydroxide. This means that in converting the enolate into hydroxide, we are going from a less stable anion to a more stable anion. In other words, the step is thermodynamically favored. This step is aided by what we talked about previously, the fact that we're establishing a resonance delocalized conjugated pi system in the course of this step, which lends additional stability to the neutral product, in fact, that doesn't really show up in this argument regarding the anions. This is one of the only circumstances really in organic chemistry where it's okay to use hydroxide as a nucleophage for the very specific reasons that we're setting up a delocalized pi system and we're converting a less stable anion into a more stable anion in the process. We've just seen the elimination of water from an aldol product under basic conditions, but acidic conditions, specifically an acid catalyst, can also promote this elimination. And this is extremely common in acid catalyzed aldol reactions, which we'll look at in detail in a later video. Again, the product is an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound, and a byproduct is water. What has happened here is the elimination of water from the original beta hydroxy aldehyde or ketone. The mechanism here is a little bit different though because of course it doesn't go through an enolate intermediate since we're under acidic conditions. Instead, a process we've seen before occurs first to generate an intermediate we've seen before. Tautomerization occurs in the first two elementary steps to give an enol intermediate. I won't show the details of that, I'll just draw the enol tautomer that forms. Tautomerization produces an enol with a hydroxy group beta to the original carbonyl carbon. And this is acid catalyzed, so we still have acid around, and where we're going from here is ultimately the elimination of water from this to set up the unsaturated carbonyl compound product. 
In order to eliminate water, we need to turn that hydroxyl group into a better leaving group under acidic conditions, and the way to do that is to protonate the oxygen that will ultimately become part of the water leaving group. This is what happens next, and we now have set up H2O plus as a good leaving group adjacent to actually a three atom pi system that can potentially donate electrons toward that leaving group to kick it off. And that's the enol. So for example, we could just use the pi electrons to show H2O plus departing with a pair of electrons, or we could involve the lone pair on oxygen as well. And this is nice because it generates a resonance form that satisfies the octet rule. But in any event, either of those electron flows, this first arrow is sort of pseudo optional, will get us to a resonance structure of the resulting intermediate, which looks like the product, but just protonated. A final proton transfer back to the conjugate base of the catalyst, then generates the neutral unsaturated product. So this condensation under acidic conditions is a little bit more involved, but notice that the key step here again still is the elimination of water from some intermediate involving a nucleophilic derivative of the carbonyl group, either an enolate or under acidic conditions, an enol. And this process is essentially impossible to stop at the beta hydroxy ketone or aldehyde stage. So acid catalyzed aldol reactions go all the way through the condensation, all the way to the unsaturated carbonyl compound product.